Well, let's talk about a viscosity thing. So that's another confusion that people have um, out there because you have, you know, some of your big boys um, that have um, sort of what I would consider older, really generation acrylic type technology, and they're very thin. And then we have Italian, you know, type coatings that are a lot thicker and they use the word thixotropic for those where, you know, as they're going through, they thin and then they come back out. So how do your coatings, um, are, are they thixotropic in nature? Because obviously you have a very heavy viscosity. And what is the reason um, for um, a higher viscous material versus a uh, thinner material? Is there advantages or disadvantages between the two? Okay, well, that's a, that's a good couple of questions. There. Yeah, I guess sorry, I'll, sorry. I'm gonna <laughs> pick down the first part to start with. Um, yeah, our coatings tend to be on the higher viscosity side, a uh, thousand centipoise to two thousand centipoise. Which, I mean, unless you're using a Zon four, a Zon five, it's not even going to go through right. it. Right, right. <laughs> um, you know, depending how you're spraying, we would recommend putting a little bit of water in there if you're putting it through a conventional like cup gun. Uh, just because the cup guns doesn't doesn't don't have the pump to push that fluid along, um, the you know like you said that they've got older thinner materials that's coming from the school of this is going to work the same way as your solvent base does instead of necessarily finding a right balance of resins and additives they just said well we're just going to reduce the product so it's thin enough viscosity wise that the material flows out well. Uh, in in that stage, but then you have problems with hang and sag, mm -hmm. and you know you can even have uh, the convection current problems in material having cell structures in the in the finished surface that you didn't expect um, because of that low viscosity. Um, the higher viscosity materials, uh, they just need to have a better balance, whether it's you know the resin or the low shear and the high shear thickeners. Um, the, certainly for the can, the standpoint of like can stability, it's easier to send it a higher risk material. It doesn't settle. The matting agents have a lower tendency to go to the bottom of the pail. Requires a little bit less stirring. Um, I can see a can of our PR170 primer there in the in the frame. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that material is is thick, but it, you know it's also very high solids, and it really doesn't settle. Uh, you know, sitting in the can unless it's sat for years. Um, so you get the advantage, certainly, in can stability, a high rheology, high viscosity. Um, the, there's not a real drawback to flow in high viscosity unless you're dealing with very porous substrates, uh, walnut and oak, uh, where you've got that deep open grain, you know, where you're looking for the material to kind of soak into that grain and not not leave a sharp uh, point at the end of those grains. That's always that's always been a problem with water as well. That kind of leads into another surface tension problem, more so than uh, uh, just a viscosity problem. But uh, no, there's no real reason why you would specifically select a low visc material. Um, you know, I could take a low viscosity material and turn it into something high viscosity the issue then probably becomes air entrapment. Uh, you yeah. know, if you've ever sprayed something that's very thick, if you're putting it through an air mix or, or an air assist airless, you, you know, you can have some issues with the air entrapment because just because of the viscosity. Um, yeah, like I said, it's kind of a two part question there. I think I yeah. answered most of it. No. Yeah. Um, and can you touch on this? Because a lot of guys um, are confused also on the fact that just because it's thick doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hang as well. Um, so can you can you touch on that? Just because you have a, a heavy viscosity doesn't mean it's going to have vertical hang. Because there's a lot of guys that are using, uh, you know, some of the trim paints and stuff out there. And they're like, I can't, you know, hang this stuff. And it's like, well, it wasn't designed just because it's thick doesn't mean that you get better vertical hang. Sure. And then I guess this, this may have been part of where you wanted to go with your first question is the difference between, uh, you know, either viscosity and rheology. So the viscosity, just in the general, if you're saying it's thick, it's viscous as, as, a, as a fluid, it's, it's, it's heavy. Like honey is very viscous and it's a viscous Newtonian flow fluid. Whereas you have most paints, they tend to be more pseudoplastic where they're going to have uh, like a, a, a reaction to the amount of shear. So Let's take a, a paint, for example, that's that's high viscosity but doesn't have any thixotropy or any any shear stability. Um, it's going to pump through your 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 pump, 
and it, and it and it gets sheared down as it goes through that pump the viscosity is actually dropping just like if you take something and you start stirring it you'll notice the visc might break down it gets a little thinner when you start stirring it um so that that rheology that thixotropy is breaking down the intent is for when that material goes out is to hit the to, to hit the panel and then to set back up and for that rheology to rebound so you, you you can start with a material that's medium high viscosity it shears down as it goes through your pump and then you have that rebound to get the hang in a vertical application and that's the thixotropy that when people, when people talk about it just because something is thick doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have that rebound uh of viscosity to to hang now there's a variety of different tools that you have certainly in the water base material side to approach each of these problems differently. Uh, you know, we, we have a specialty product that's made specifically for hang line chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an acrylic, but it's very, very high build. I mean, you can easily achieve 12 plus mils of hang uh, in, in what is relatively thin material. So, you know, the, the control specifically over what may be the thickness viscosity versus the ability of something to hang is is quite separate certainly in a water-based uh, material rather than uh, what you might see in in, in solvent-based although the concepts are very similar in solvent-based you know be a lot of clay type thickeners that just go in and spray and hit the board and hang well uh, the real trick is getting the product to have good anti-sag properties without impacting the overall appearance and flow uh, because these things that make it want to sit still obviously want to also want to prevent it from flowing out. Uh, yeah. So that balance tends to be more important than, than just whether you've got a thick product versus something that sags.